Okay. Okay, okay, before you watch this video, I just want to say that I view this video as a completely subjective take on the TV series. I do not view my opinion of the show as absolute or the objective stance on anything. If I do ever talk like that's the case, which I'm going to do my best not to do, please disregard that as a slip up on my end. I believe in the concept that art is subjective, and just because I like it or don't like something, it doesn't mean everybody else has to as well. I've seen that mentality in certain communities I've dwelled in in the past, and that is not the vibe I want to bring to the table. So for context, up until a few days ago, I had never watched Steven Universe, which is surprising since I consider myself a cartoon enthusiast and will watch anything that has even an inkling of animation included within it. There were a few factors that went into me putting off this show for so long, one of the biggest ones being me having an internalized self-hatred for myself back when it first came out because I was having feelings that strayed from the traditional standards that society had put upon me, and at the time, I didn't want to validate those feelings by watching a show that did just that. A show that normalized queer relationships and identification and broke social norms on live TV? Blasphemous! Inconceivable! Which is actually pretty hilarious because I was very openly and behind closed doors supportive of LGBTQ plus relationships and identity back then. I had this whole thought process where I support others who identify this way, but if I do it, that's a huge no, 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 no. I could do an entire story time on my journey of self-discovery, so I'm gonna stop rambling about that and get to the topic at hand. But you may ask, now that I'm over my internalized hatred and have been out of the closet with my preferences and identity for several years now, why did I continue to put this show off? If I'm gonna be honest here, I just didn't really think to watch it. I'd forgotten the show had existed and it didn't cross my mind to getting around to watching it. My brain is very goofy. If something isn't constantly shoved in my face and down my throat, I tend to forget about it. Very ADHD. But recently, my friend group briefly brought it up during a Discord call and talking about how much they loved the show and how cool it was, it reminded my silly possum brain of this show's existence and the two brain cells I had said, oh yeah. Steven Universe is a thing. Now I want to acknowledge that, now that I've watched the show, I realize it's much more than just space lesbians, and the show delves into topics that are much darker in tone and a good character studies on trauma, expectations, and the effect those expectations can have on children, etc. Written in a way that's nuanced, but also simple enough that adolescents can wrap their heads around too. And that's something about this show that I've really come to appreciate now that I've watched it. Sometimes the message that's trying to be conveyed can get a little confusing for me on what exactly is trying to be said, but that's a me problem. I'm not claiming to be the most analytical or sharpest knife in the drawer. What might be simple and easy to understand can be confusing and head scratching for others. That's the beauty of subjectivity, I suppose. But anyway, that's what I aim to do with this video. I just wanna put my personal thoughts on the show out there into the ether. I'm not sure if this would be considered a review or a personal analysis of it, so this video is what it is, and that's the best way I'm going to try and explain it. So enough with my pre-video ramblings and let's get into it, shall we? This video is probably going to be one of my longer ones, and to avoid myself from wanting to self-delete myself from editing bean stills into it, I will present you with a speed paint of some kind to enjoy whilst I talk into your ear holes. So sit back, relax, grab your coffee or tea, and let me tell you about my thoughts on Steven Universe. So let's start with an easy topic, the art style of this show. As an artist myself, I think this is a topic I can have a fairly informed opinion on. So to put it in the simplest way I can, I like the art style, for the most part. I have kind of mixed feelings about the art style in general. When it comes to the background art of this show, I have to give my undying praise to it. There is something very beautiful about the pastel color palettes they used for the entire show and detail work in the line art for the trees, buildings, landscapes, etc. It's very lo-fi and gentle and soft, which I absolutely love. But in contrast to these softer palettes, a lot of the coloring style choices, including these softer palettes, involved hard edges and angles in the shading and lighting style, which I actually find really cool. You take these two things that would normally contradict themselves, smush them together, and make them something fresh and new at the time, and it works. Also, I do like the idea that the lighting and shading of this show is very edged and angled, most likely mirroring the theme of the show, which is centered around gemstones, which are typically hard edged and angular. It's a very neat artistic parallel that I really enjoy. However, as much as I absolutely love the art style for the backgrounds and the color themes, the thing I have kind of mixed feelings on is the character art. This take of the character art is heavily subjective, but I'm just not personally a fan of the modern Western character art styles that have been in most modern TV series lately. I can't really explain why on a point by point sort of way, the best way I can say it is it's just not really my thing. It just all feels kinda samey to me, which 
I know there's been a whole controversy over that opinion being the same face syndrome debates of the 2000s, which I don't really agree with that stance anyways. If I remember correctly, there was one episode where someone said to Steven, oh, I thought you were Clarence. Might have been the Uncle Grandpa crossover, I'm not sure. Which, it was a really funny joke, by the way. I cackled over it. I don't know if it was a joke about the similar art styles of the two shows have, or if that was the show's way of prodding at the Cal Arts controversy that was going on at the time, or neither. Either way, the joke was funny as hell. But all of that aside, in the end, I am personally a fan of the over-the-top character designs that feature heavy shape language, overly expressive expressions, and facial features, like from the old Chuck Jones cartoons or the Don Bluth animation. Even the character designs from what would now be considered classic Disney movies like The Great Mouse Detective, Treasure Planet, Oliver and Company, etc, etc. It would be unfair of me to say that Steven Universe doesn't apply shape language into their character designs. Most of the cast members of this show really apply this mentality to their designs. Garnet is my favorite example of shape language being applied. Her design applies rounded soft lines around the hip area and the legs and such, along with squares and rectangles, showing that she's a person that's sturdy and reliable and rock solid while also having a soft loving side towards Steven and those she really cares about. I love that. And plenty of other characters have those sort of shapes, languages applied to them as well. Honestly, I think it's the faces that gives me mixed feelings. It's just as simple as that. I'm not a fan of the art style for the faces, and that's the extent of it really. Would it be fair of me to expect a TV series to reach the same quality of Don Bluth, Disney, or DreamWorks 2D movie? Of course not. The budgets for TV series are increasingly smaller, so it would be asinine for me to expect that out of a kid's show on a Cartoon Network series. I realize that the modern Western art style is easier to work with and is overall more convenient, and I am not a person that is against people making things easier to draw for the sake of not wanting to off themselves every time they have to draw that character frame by frame. Most of my original characters are designed with that mentality in place since I mostly use my characters for short comics where I have to redraw them over and over and over and over again. A gender fluid possum can dream for more over the top and extreme character designs though, right? So in short, I thoroughly enjoy most of it, but I'd be lying if I didn't have my nitpicks. In essence, I really enjoyed the overarching story of this show. I'm not one that's into outer space stories typically, but this one captured my interest. I really like the concept of the gems, how they're made, where they come from, learning about their society and their societal norms. It was a really interesting concept to follow. I particularly found myself intrigued with the lore around the diamonds and their whole entire spiel. My personal take on the matter though, I would have liked to have spent more time learning about the gem aspects of everything. Which, before you all come at my throat, I know that isn't the main purpose of the show. I know that the show is more character study based, focusing on the cast members that Steven is closely aligned with, which makes sense, since the show was very Steven focused, following him around, learning about the world and the people in it through him and his experiences. I just kind of wish that we'd spent less time learning about the humans in this world and more time learning about the gems and their society. There's still so much that could be explored about the gems empire that we didn't get to see because Steven was hyper focusing on Mr. Smiley, Mayor Dewey, Jamie the Mailman, and fucking Onion for a handful of episodes. I'm personally of the belief that we did not need as many Onion episodes as we got. My least favorite episode in the series is Onion Gang. I fucking hate that episode with every fiber of my being. But I have to give credit where it's due. I did enjoy learning about Lars and Sadie specifically and watching their characters grow and blossom into what they became. Those were some interesting stories that I genuinely enjoyed, but half the human cast I found fairly uninteresting and could have done without a deep dive of their character development. I know a lot of people probably enjoyed that sort of thing, maybe? I don't know. But in my personal opinion, the gem lore was way more interesting and I would have liked to spend more time following that. I think the biggest slap to the face this series gave me in regards to robbing us of an interesting story in gem lore was when Lars sacrificed himself to save Steven and the other gems. Steven brought him to life, basically turning him into Lion 2.0, and instead of Steven staying with Lars and getting a great opportunity to learn more about Homeworld, Steven travels through Lars's hair to go back to Earth, and the literal next episode is about Steven attempting to help Mayor Dewey win the election, which they failed to do, by the way, when I tell you I wanted to rip my hair out after seeing that. I was hoping that perhaps we'd get plenty of Steven going back and forth at the very least to help Lars with his endeavors and getting back to Earth after that atrocity that was Dewey's win. Which, we did kind of get that, but the fact we had to wait six whole fucking episodes to even remotely get anything related to what the heck was happening with Lars was frustrating. Sometimes it felt like Steven just totally forgot someone he considered his best friend was stranded out in space and it was so There were a couple of times where Lars was briefly mentioned in passing conversation, but that's about it. 
between those six episodes. Then, when Steven finally goes back, Lars is suddenly a space pirate leading his crew off colors. And like, what? Why didn't we get to see that journey? That would have been way more interesting in my personal opinion. I'm not going to sit here and say the character growth that happened with the characters we did see in those six episodes wasn't good or necessary. There was some important development that went on there, and I don't think the show was wrong for studying those character developments or should have gotten rid of it altogether. I just wish they'd written it in a way to where that character development could have happened before or after the Lars and space stuff was happening. Or at least we could have seen more of Lars' space journey before focusing on that stuff. But despite my gripes with the placement of certain episodes and the story elements and the focus issues the writing seemed to have occasionally, I couldn't help but keep wanting to watch. I continued to watch the show because I was genuinely excited to see the resolution to the overarching conflict. And even when the episodes weren't focusing on the overarching plot of the series, I still, for the most part, found the character studies on a good chunk of the characters to be very engaging and interesting. Which leads me to my next topic. Garnet is my favorite, hands down. I'm sure she's a popular choice, but I don't care. I love her so much. From her character design to her story to her personality and her personal struggles that she deals with, she's amazing. I love her to death. But I'm going to stop myself from rambling about Garnet because I need to talk about the rest of the characters. Full disclosure, there's way too many characters for me to talk about individually, so I'm just going to talk in a rather broad sort of way and focus on the characters I have strong opinions about. There's a good chunk of characters that feel very lukewarm about. A lot of them were all right. They weren't bad characters and they weren't amazing. They were just okay. But the good news is that the majority of characters I feel this way about are not what would be considered the main cast of the series. So I guess that's a good thing and should be normal. The only problem is I'd find myself having a hard time being interested in episodes that focused on these lukewarm characters because there were other characters that had much more interesting things going on that I would have preferred to learn about and observe. It took a lot of willpower to just not skip episodes like this and move on to the next episode that would have something more interesting or plot focused going on in it. Onion Gang, Future Boy Zoltron, and Dewey Wins were the biggest offenders in this category. Anytime I saw an episode title with Onion in it, I found myself screaming into my hand from frustration. I'm an Onion hater. If that isn't obvious at this point. But aside from the plot irrelevant characters in the show, I really enjoyed all the main characters. Each of them have their own unique journeys and struggles that they overcame and grew from by the end of the show, and it was so rewarding to see them work through their traumas and issues. I really enjoyed Pearl's journey, with her story revolving around Rose and all the hoops she had to jump through for her, and her personal views on herself and how she viewed herself as nothing, and that her life was meaningless compared to the one she dedicated herself to, and fighting off that mentality. It was very interesting to watch her project those ideas she had on Connie too, and then learning her mistake in not just teaching that mindset to Connie, but herself as well. Amethyst was also a great character to watch grow. Her inferiority complex she had to the rest of the gems and feeling lesser than a lot of the time was really rewarding to watch as she found her self-worth by the end of the show and learning not to compare herself to others and that she was enough. I think her character arc is very valuable lesson for not just kids, but some adults to be able to look at and learn from too, since I know so many people, myself included, that struggle with this in their own lives. And Steven kind of has a similar character study to Amethyst. Steven is constantly reminded of how amazing and wonderful his mother was by the rest of the gems, and he constantly feels like he has these impossible expectations to live up to, only to find out that his mother was flawed in so many ways and she wasn't the perfect example he needed to try and achieve. He's constantly trying to clean up a mess that he inherited from his mother, and you see that inheritance just pile up as the show progresses and the toll it takes on Steven. It's very interesting to observe throughout the show's course. I found myself really intrigued by the diamonds too, not because I agree with their actions and what they do, but because they're just so shrouded in mystery for a good chunk of the show. Even when they come on screen for the first time, they have a rather intimidating, alluring, and mysterious cadences about them that just pulled me in and made me want to learn more about them. It was really interesting learning about their past relationship with Pink Diamond, and then eventually learning that they were what drove Pink away, and that they were wrong to treat her the way they did. That they were forcing their impossible standards onto her and getting mad at her and even punishing her whenever she cracked under the pressure. And Blue and Yellow finally realized they were undergoing the same abuse through these impossible standards from White. Their whole family dynamic was very interesting to watch and unravel and dissect. Ugh. 
I wish we'd gotten to see more of that. There's one character in the show that I have very strong yet mixed feelings about, and that would be Lapis Lazuli. Lapis is a very interesting character that's got a lot going on mentally. She's a character that I think a lot of people can relate to, someone who's been mistreated, abused, taken advantage of in her past, and she eventually heals from this trauma. It takes her a while, but she gets there eventually, and I really kind of enjoy that her trauma plagues her for as long as it does. Trauma never really goes away, but whether we choose to let it consume us or to help us grow stronger is up to us, and Lapis is a great showcase of that experience for the kids and adults watching this show. I have mixed feelings about what happens during Lapis Lazuli's journey of healing, and I think you might all know where I'm going with this. That's right, folks, I'm gonna talk about Lapis and Jasper's whole thing that happened. Ugh. I'm fully aware that this is a very complex concept that is complicated to talk about. I understand that in some cases, people who were abused sometimes take back power by becoming the abuser instead. It is a very real thing that I witnessed firsthand in past relationships of mine. On a story-based analysis, this was a really interesting concept to unravel in character study through Lapis. However, I have a hard time sympathizing or liking Lapis because of that aspect of her story. Becoming the abuser because you were abused doesn't make it right, and in the end, Lapis Lapis makes it clear that she realizes how unhealthy that is and doesn't want to fall back into the same type of toxic relationship that thrives off of mutual hate and abuse towards each other. I'm really glad she comes to that realization herself. And although she's sort of a bitch to Peridot in the episode Barnmates, she does eventually see she's being a little unfair to Peridot by the end of that episode. Also, her aggression towards Peridot is mildly warranted due to the last time she saw Peridot, she was Peridot's informant prisoner, and they didn't exactly part ways on good terms, but still. Despite the progress she makes, in the back of my mind, I always just see the people in my past who abused me to take control in their own life due to their own trauma. I know that's me projecting onto the character heavily, and that's not the show writer's fault at all. She's a good character that has one of the more complex hurdles to jump, but for that reason specifically, I just can't bring myself to love her or sympathize with her too much. Whoa, I spent a lot of time talking about Lapis, I'm sorry. She's probably the character I have the strongest feelings about in regards to loving and hating them, but Despite deep-rooted issues with Lapis, I'll always hate Onion more. Fucking can't stand that little fucker! Steven Universe, I can honestly say, probably has some of the most bold themes that were attempted to be tackled in a kids' TV series at the time. I want to emphasize kids' TV series. Steven Universe did some really interesting and groundbreaking things at the time. It was the first Western kids' series to have a gay wedding on screen, which is honestly pretty incredible, actually. The queer foundation of this show is honestly really refreshing, even watching it now, however many years later into the future. I loved seeing that the show was very female-oriented, being the gems were ruled by a diamond matriarchy, as referred to in the show, they took a genre that would traditionally be considered more of masculine interest, being sci-fi, and flipped it on its head and made it completely feminine. And considering the time this came out, that's pretty damn cool. I love the overarching theme that you should be true to yourself for nobody else's sake but your own. If you constantly seek the approval of others, you'll never know your own self-worth, and that simply being you is enough. Of course, you should always be the best you that you can be, but don't let others put impossible standards on top of you or allow people to manipulate and force you to be something you're not comfortable with. I also really enjoyed them trying to tackle trauma, the effects it can have on a person, and how people can grow or stay in stasis from it. There's so many different effects that trauma can have on a person, and the show definitely showcases that. Trauma had a different outcome for each cast member that endured it, and seeing their journey was a wild and healing experience. Do I think they tackled some of these subjects perfectly? No. There are some flaws to their methods, but I can't expect too much from a show geared towards kids. When watching shows like this, I have to remind myself that sometimes the more complex nuances of certain subjects have to be watered down a little so that the younger percentage of their audience can have an easier grasp on it. As an adult, I would have liked to have seen deeper dives on the trauma of a lot of these characters had to endure. Most people who know me know I'm a sucker for angst, but... Also, as an adult watching the show that's geared towards kids, I understand some children might not be able to wrap their heads entirely around the deep dive into such a subject matter. So for that, I give it a pass and consider it good writing. They knew their audience and geared towards them, and that's a good approach to take. 
oh my god, the fucking music. Yeah, I don't really have too much to say on this subject. The music is great. Absolutely love the soundtrack. I guess there's two types of music to talk about in this show, the soundtrack and the actual songs. The soundtrack is great. It's got a really great lo-fi beat to it in the more casual scenes that don't have too much going on, which really matches the vibe. Or would it be Vaporwave? I genuinely don't know all the different subgenres of music or what they're called, but I think that's what it would be classified as. I don't know. And the action soundtracks during the fight scenes are pretty great too. They're not too over the top, but they really just kind of elevate the scenes just the right amount. They don't steal the show, but rather add to it. Sometimes composers will flex way too hard on shows and take away the focus from the show and onto the accompanying soundtrack, and I can safely say that Steven Universe doesn't have that problem in the slightest. It's a really great balanced and nutritious meal of music. As for the actual songs in the show, they're great too. I find myself listening to Steven Universe songs in the background while I'm drawing now and again now, and I'd say a large percentage of them are fantastic. This followed over to the movie as well, which, by the way, Let Us Adore You, both the original and the reprise, is the best song in the entire series in my personal opinion. I am obsessed with that song. I've already found someone, just let us adore you. I love songs that utilize harmonies to the nth degree, and boy does that song just tickle that preference for me. I also really enjoyed the song It's Over, Isn't It? It's over, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it over? The song, in regards to composition, has a very beautiful piano sequence that is just ear candy for me to listen to. And the lyrics, oh, the lyrics. I love the story that the song was telling. I think it's something that a lot of people can relate to in a general sense. A relationship coming to an end, watching them move on without you, and realizing that the relationship is over, and coming to terms with that. So good. But yeah, if I went over every song that I like from this show, we'd be here for a while. So to sum it up, the music from Steven Universe gets a big old thumbs up from me. E. This show rocks. Ever since watching it, I've been kicking myself for having put it off for so long for such silly reasons. But I'm kind of glad I did. If I had watched back when it first came out, I probably would have had a rather hateful and tainted view of the show because of my own insecurities and struggles with my self-identity back in the day. But now I can watch it with a clear mind and ability to enjoy the show for what it is. It's a sci-fi show that's got a lot of heart, a lot of good story elements, diversity and inclusivity through it. This show wasn't perfect, but it was a solid attempt at making a show that was entertaining and genuinely fun to watch. It aimed to give more positive representation in media to marginalized groups, while not entirely shoving it in your face. I had this impression in the past that Steven Universe was basically just a show going, look at our space lesbians, look at them, look at them, look at them. But to my pleasant surprise, it was so much more than that. This was a good representation in my personal opinion. The show valued the principle of delivering a good and fun story more than anything I personally think, and that's exactly what it did. Do I wish we'd seen more of Homeworld? Yeah. Do I wish we'd spent more time with Lars when he was going through his space journey? Yeah. Do I wish we'd gotten way less of Onion? For the love of God, yeah! But no show is perfect. There is a small handful of gripes I have compared to the armfuls of praise I have for the show. So, in conclusion, I'd have to say that Steven Universe is a great show, and if you've been putting it off like I had for so long, please go watch it. It may surprise you. Okay, bye! Here's a 